Barry has said that oil subsidies will be discontinued in 2023. Hi, welcome to what's happening. These are the top 10 stories. At number one, President Muhammad Buhari has said that oil subsidies will be discontinued in 2023. The President stated this while delivering her speech on the presentation of the 2023 budget proposal before a joint session of the National Assembly on Friday. In the budget presentation tagged Budget of Fiscal Sustainability and Transition, the 2023 budget size is 19.76 trillion Naira. The President also stated that government alone cannot continue to fund the tertiary institutions in Nigeria. Drawing reference from the practice in some other clients, the President said that government will adopt other measures to properly fund education in Nigeria. At number two, the Court of Appeal has ordered the Academic Staff Union of Universities to immediately call off its ongoing strike as a precondition for granting the union's request to appeal a similar ruling of the National Industrial Court. The union had appealed the ruling of the Industrial Court, ordering it to call off its industrial strike action and return back to classrooms. However, the Court of Appeal granted ASU's application on the condition that the union obeys the ruling of the lower court and calls off the strike immediately pending the determination of the substantive suit. The court gave ASU seven days within which to file the appeal following the obedience of the ruling of the lower court. At number three, River State Government has withdrawn the criminal charges it instituted against a former Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi. The state government also withdrew similar charges filed against the governorship candidate of the All Progressives Congress in the state, Tonye Cole, and five others. River State had filed a criminal suit accusing them of selling the government's assets, running into billions of Naira when Amechi was the state governor. However, the lawyer to the APC, Amechi and Cole, argued that withdrawing the suit was an abuse of the court process and prayed the courts to dismiss the criminal charges if the suit must be withdrawn. The presiding judge, Justice Okobule Basam, after listening to arguments, struck out the suit and the charges against the APC and others. At number four, the Police Service Commission has approved the promotion of 40 deputy commissioners to the substantive rank of commissioners of police. The accelerated commission also approved promotion for two assistant commissioners due to existing vacancies in the medical cadre. The new commissioners of police were promoted after an interactive session and interview with the commission in plenary chaired by Justice Clara Bata Ogumbi, JSC. The commission also approved the promotion of CP Abdul Yari Lafia and CP Rudolf Echebi to the rank of Assistant Inspector General. At number five, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, has said $2.3 trillion is needed to modernize Nigerians' infrastructure over the next 21 years. The minister disclosed this at the Integrated Infrastructural Research for Development Conference in Abuja. She stated that the revised National Integrated Infrastructure Master Plan will fund critical economic sectors such as power, rail, roads, housing and agriculture from 2022 to 2043. Speaking further, Ahmed noted that extensive consultation with the private sector has created an innovative approach to financing infrastructure projects. At number six, the managing director of the Nigerian Railway Corporation, Mr. Fidet Okiria, has said the federal government is putting concrete security measures in place to safeguard train passengers and railway infrastructure across the country. He added that a team has been set up for rail security and broken into committees to ensure concrete measures to safeguard train passengers and railway infrastructure. The team is made up of Office of the Chief of Defense Staff, Chief of Army Staff, the IG, DSS, and the Military Intelligence. At number seven, the Lagos State Police Command has summoned six policemen to its headquarters in Ikeja over alleged extortion of 100,000 Naira from a member of the public. A man simply identified as Oluwa Bajura on his verified Twitter handle alleged that some policemen extorted him. He claimed that around 2.45 p.m., some police officers stopped him at Soliki, Aguda, Lagos, and conducted the usual search on him. Afterwards, the officers escorted him to a POS and withdrew the sum of 100,000 naira from his account. He further alleged that after the officers took him to the nearest station and forced him to admit to being a criminal. 
The command spokesman, Benjamin Hodei, confirmed this incident on Friday. Oluwagbadura took to his Twitter page to thank Kundein and the DPO and confirmed refund of the extorted sum. At number eight, Abubakar Malami, the Attorney General of the Federation, says about 10 witnesses will testify in a suit filed against Obiachulu Obikeze and four others for forging chieftain seat documents. Counsel for the AGF, Ewere Aliemeke, disclosed this on Friday before Justice Ian Ipo of the Abuja Division of the Federal High Court. The five defendants were accused of uttering forged documents and forging a letter to the special advisor to the governor of Anambra on chieftaincy and town union matters. Mr. Epo adjourned the matter until December 14th to hear the preliminary objection of the defense. At number nine, Kano State Fire Service has confirmed the death of a 12-year-old boy, Sadiq Issa, who drowned in a pond at Jingabawa village, Minjeba local government area of the state. Similarly, a 20-year-old man also lost his life in open water at Ruwan Mubi Kofa Nasarawa, Kano municipal local government area. The public relations officer of the agency, Saminu Abdullahi, who confirmed the incident, noted that the agency's control room received a distress call at about 10.25 a.m. on Friday. He said that on arrival, the rescue team succeeded in retrieving the unconscious boy who accidentally fell into a pond. He, however, explained that an investigation has commenced to unravel the man's identity and the mystery behind the unfortunate incident. Finally, at number 10, scammers have stolen $100 million in cryptocurrency from Binance, the world's biggest exchange for crypto assets, making it one of the biggest thefts in cryptocurrency history. Company chief Champ Bang Zero wrote on Twitter that an exploit in the system led to extra production of the exchange dedicated currency. He, however, noted that the issue is now contained and funds are safe. He apologized for the inconvenience and said he will provide further updates accordingly. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.